frogs and the mice. The frogs and the mice, who inhabited part of a most extensive fen, of which there remained unoccupied sufficient room to hold many whole nations of both, could not agree with each other so as to live in peace. Many bitter disputes arose between them about the right to particular pools and their tuft-covered margins. At length, national jealousies and anim animosities arose to such a height that each claimed the sovereignty of the whole fen, and the most rancorous war was waged between them in order to settle, by force of arms, their respective pretensions. While the hostile armies were drawn up in battle array on a plain of several square yards in extent, protected on both flanks and rear by dark pools and gloomy forests of sedges, reeds and bulrushes, their two chieftains advanced to meet each other, and to it they fell as fierce as tigers. While those two combatants were thus engaged, a kite, sailing in the air, beheld them from a great distance and darting down upon them, instantly bore them off in his talons, while the field of battle presented a delicious repast to some ravens who had chanced to spy the movements of these hostile armies. Application. The leading feature in the character of men in all ages of the world has ever been self-interest. And when this is not kept within due bounds by a just sense of morality and honour, their bad passions are let loose and money, power or dominion are the chief objects they keep in view. When men thus depraved have long soared above restraint and their numbers and power become predominant in a nation, the accumulation of their wickedness hurries them blindly on to break out into offensive wars with other nations on the most frivolous of pretenses, and rapine, plunder, and innumerable murders succeed by which humanity is outraged, and the fair face of nature is deluged with blood. Peace is the natural happy state of man, and war is his disgrace. The mighty among the frogs and mice attend not to this. They strut and exalt their time, for their pride, tyranny, and injustice will have its end. For opposed to these vices are the attributes of omnipotence, and they are eternal. It often happens, as in the case of the combatants of the fable, that when national depravity has attained its height, the kites and ravens of other regions are invited forth and made the instruments of a just retribution. <laughs>